Hi my friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Allie Wilkins. I am an author, I'm a spiritual guide, a teacher, a mentor. What else? I'm a I'm an energy healer. I do Akashic Records readings. I'm a seer. So my whole mission is really to support others in coming back to their soul and coming back to our true power, which often includes a lot of, we have to get rid of a lot of conditioning. We have to remove so much of this. And so today's video, we're going to be talking about the religion of logic. This is something that for me, understanding my relationship to logic and to magic early on that that had to really change in order for me to be in my full power. So I've been talking a lot about the patriarchy because that's where all of our problems began. <laughs> like, like it's kind of sounds blamey and victimy, but it's true in so many ways. This is where our belief systems were drastically changed. So going back to 5,000 to 10,000 BC, this time frame, we think that this time frame was like primitive. It's like cavemen walking around like, no, this was actually more so the time that like the Egyptian pyramids were built, that the, the pyramids across the world were built. Um, when we get in, oh wait, so during this time period, everything was seen as divine. Everything was seen as having life force. So magic was wild my, magic was wildly celebrated also during this time period it's like everyone's connection to their intuition to their really their feminine energy was at its at its full power and i don't know enough about this to say because i wasn't like well i probably was there but not in this lifetime in this incarnation i wasn't there right so i can't say oh there's a little lizard i just have to show you guys this he's cre he's creeping i've never seen one this do this. Do you see him? He sees me. <laughs> Anyways, he's like, you were there. You're ancient. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So during that time frame, what we can say is that we know that they were deeply connected to their intuition. They were deeply connected to Mother Earth, to different beings, to different energies, and to working with that and power. And so as the church took over, all of a sudden, magic is seen as dangerous. Not only magic, but our intuition, visions, things that we can see, like you would be killed if you showed any of that. Herb, herbology, herbalism, I forget what it's called. Like working with herbs for healing, all of these sorts of things are seen as magic and you'd be killed for it if you showed that. So naturally we were like scared out of these innate parts of ourselves and psychologically tormented so that we thought that magic or that our intuition was an act of the devil i want you to just like let's just have a moment for that you guys i have people in my family who have straight they haven't said it to my face they've said it around around the corner and it got back to me real fast that I work with the devil, that my sister as an acupuncturist, we're both highly intuitive, that she works with the devil. These are still things that are very potent, especially in the very religious uh, communities, like the Bible belts or places like that. These are not antiquated ideas. So for like the modern Christian, you could say, or the person in like the new age church or the person who's in the non-denominational sorts of churches that are like open and more accepting. These aren't things that they're going to be saying. However, in more traditional areas, these are still belief systems that are held. So there are still people who are going to say with your work, this little lizard is just popping up everywhere. Um, there are still people who are going to think that about, about magic. And it's so sad because it just, first of all, that means that they don't have any ownership or they're com in complete repression of their own magic. And so magic doesn't mean that I'm like shooting lightning bolts out of my hands. I think maybe back in the day it did. But <laughs> now our magic is knowing our intuition, knowing our soul voice, me being able to, in an Akashic record reading, you guys, like I can see so much and people are like, how did you know that? I can see so much that doesn't make any logical sense. Or when we have these gut feelings 
Now gut feelings are seen as being different from magic for whatever reason, even though they're the same as your intuition. It's just on more of like a primal level, I would say. You have a gut feeling like, I don't, don't know why I just feel like I need to do this. There's no logic to that, right? And so we've been, we've been trained, first of all, in 99% of cases, only use logic. Your brain is the only thing that has power and your heart is just going to like get you into trouble. <clears throat> your intuition also, I don't feel, comes from your heart. To me, I don't feel my intuition in my heart. I feel it in my third eye. So what I'm trying to say is really that we've been scared out of our relationship to our own magic. And so that's why so, so often people are like, oh, this is just a rock. Like if you actually understood on a scientific level th what crystals are actually capable of and the type, how they transmit energy and how they transmute energy, then you wouldn't think that, oh, it's just a rock. But until we hear the scientific piece of it for some people, they're not going to get it, right? So why do you think that people are, are skeptical about astrology? Astrology used to be widely practiced, knowing the stars, and then all of that was banned. Now the tropical zodiac, which is what the vast majority of astrologers use, is based on a, a map of the stars from 2000 years ago when it was banned. Vedic astrology is representing where the stars actually are now. So anyways, for 2000 years, astrology was banned. And so of course people are going to be like, oh, that's not even real. That's stupid. That doesn't mean anything. There's deep symbolism and so many things outside of our logical brains. Now I will say astrology is very scientific and um, more in the realm of symbolism than like, anyways. So we're skeptical about so many parts of magic. This diminishes our power so much. This diminishes our power so much. <laughs> this freaking lizard. He's like, you guys, I sit here every day. I've never seen him. He's just hanging out in this pot. So I wonder what his message is for us. Literally, this is a perfect example. Here's a thank you, lizard. This is what you were trying to tell me. So me speaking to plants or me speaking to animals, like they can hear me, like there's an equal communication, like this lizard is a divine being. I'm like, he's an ascended master. He obviously has a message for me. I truly am like, he has a message for me. That's why he's there. Not just because he lives here. Because there's lizards all over my balcony. But he's popping up right at the time that I'm filming this video about this thing. And so he's bringing in certain frequencies that I can tap into. He has a message for me. Most people would be like, you're a psycho. Why? Because we've been trained out of having a connection to everything. We've been trained out and through fear, manipulation, coercion, murder, all those sorts of things to feel separate from everything. And we're not separate. We're connected to absolutely everything. So the religion of logic teaches us that our brain is the only thing that we can trust. Anything else is crazy. I am a believer that <clears throat> I used to say 50%. Um, what did I say? I was like 50% magic, 50% practical. And now I'm like 90% magic, 10% logic. Because there are so many things that have happened in my life because I've held certain frequencies or held certain vibrations. Different things happen through wild ways. And you might be like, yeah, that's because you're a white woman of privilege. Like that might have something to do with it. I'm not saying that it doesn't. However, me on certain, for example, certain months, don't know how I'm going to make a certain amount of income and then randomly different things come in from random places that I wasn't expecting that equal the exact amount of what I needed for that month or equal the exact amount plus like I got an unexpected bill and it covered that too. It's like there is so much magic and, and I'm just seeing this imagery of like this web, like everything is so connected. And we, if we're only utilizing our logical brain, you're going to miss out on so much. This is the way that we're programmed so that we are disconnected from our magic. Because if you rely only on your logic and only make decisions based on your logic, you're going to, you're not going to do so many things. So just as an example, I have like a thousand examples I could give you. 
Hold on, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. So as an example, um, when I was, so I'm 31 at the time of filming this. When I was 24, all of a sudden I was like starting to have a quarter life crisis. I was like, I cannot work in a corporate environment for the next 50 years until I retire. Like how the fuck do people do this? There's no way that I, this is gonna be my life. And I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, um, but I'm not, this is not going to be my life. And so like six months later, I started really wanting to do yoga teacher training in Bali. And I was like, <sighs> I, it's not that I wanted to do it. I felt so called to do it. It was like, I didn't have a choice. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna quit my job and do this. I'm gonna put the whole thing on my credit card because I don't have other money to do it. But it, the, the calling is so strong. It's like, you know, like a calling if you're a parent, if you could like sense that your child is in danger or something, or it's like that. It's this like unnameable knowing. And that was, if you've had a soul pull, a soul call, then you understand what I'm talking about. It's this, you cannot name it. There's nothing tangible to it, but you just know you have to, you have to go do something. So I went to Bali, went and did the yoga teacher training. Everyone was like, you're crazy what are you thinking like you're gonna spend all this money that you don't have on a credit card that's so stupid you're gonna why can't you just do yoga teacher training down the street at the yo local yoga studio and i was like nope it has to be there so bali is where they say um that lemuria ancient lemuria bali was is like the existing land of that today and if you go there it totally has lemurian frequency Bali also has a very, for me, it has like a home frequency, which is probably related to Lemuria as well. But when I went there, I came back, I was there for like six weeks. I came back a completely different person. I came back and had been awakened. And when I was there, I had so many beautiful experiences with the divine that I had never experienced ever in my entire life before that. If I had not gone to Bali, I don't think that my life, I wouldn't be sitting here filming this video. I don't think that things would have worked out the same. And so when you're listening to your intuition, when you're listening to your magic and, and, and as, wow, in related, in relation to like a soul pull like that, these are invitations for you to go into a different paradigm because I easily could have let my fear overcome that of like, you know, I just don't have the money. It's not responsible for me to do that. If I died tomorrow, I've done so many things that haven't been responsible, but in the eyes of logic, but I am rewarded so deeply on a soul level. If I died tomorrow, I'd be like, I'm good. I did everything that I, that my soul wanted me to. There's nothing I didn't do because I was afraid. There's nothing I didn't do because, um, logic told me not to. Most people can't say that because we're ruled by logic, right? So there's so many examples of other things that I've done like that, where I'm asked to join masterminds or, or I want to join groups or coaching programs. And it's like a lot of money. And you know, for me at the time, and I'm like, I don't know if I can do it or I don't know why, but I feel called to be in Los Angeles. I feel called to live in Los Angeles. I don't know why, but I feel called to go to these mountains and then profound things happen when you're there. If you don't follow your soul calls, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret it so deeply, but your logical mind will never understand. Your logical mind will always say, well, it doesn't really make sense. Well, you don't really have the money for it. Well, you, you know, so-and-so is going to think this and that, well, how is this going to affect your career and all this stuff? Your soul leads you to where you're supposed to go. But the problem is we're so trained to just think with our logical mind that we let that stop us so much of the time. And, um, yeah. So I wanted, I wrote a couple of things down. So also something that happened because I was talking before about how we've been ingrained to be fearful of magic, to be fearful of intuition, to be fearful of even like astrology and stuff like that, or like herbs, you know, like how many people do you know that will take an aspirin before they would take some sort of herbal remedy? The herbal remedies used to be the norm now like people we just are so it's not that people are afraid of that but it's that what i'm trying to say is we are so disconnected 
from this part of ourselves that is one with everything, that is one with nature. Also, this is the only way that we could exploit nature the way that we do. This is the only way that we could be slaughtering so many animals to eat in horrific conditions. Hunting is different. I used to have a very different opinion about hunting because I didn't understand. But all of these animals being slaughtered in disgusting, horrific ways, and we're fine with it. Or we turn, we're not fine with it. We turn a blind eye. We're like, well, I really love Chick-fil-A. Well, I really love to eat steak. Well, I really love this. So I'm not going to pay attention to all these things over here, what they're actually going through. That's because we feel separate from them. We are not separate. We are not separate. So one thing that the church did, this is something that occurred at the beginning of the patriarchy, the Catholic church and the patriarchy are one and the same. This is what created the whole system that we have today that has has grown outside of the church. But the origination of this started with the church. I have a few other videos here that will talk about that. And a masterclass called Return to Goddess on my website that I'll link below. Um, what the church did was basically separate humans from God. They separated life in general from God. It was everything is separate Everything is separate from spirit. I'm about to sneeze. Maybe not. Anyways, um, so we, we were completely separated. You could just use that word. The separation began. We are no longer seen as being connected with God. A lot of people talk about the original, what's the word that they use? Um, the original trauma, you could say, is like our separation from God. That is the patriarchy because before we were one with God. So this created such a distortion that everything outside of us is separate. And so working with it is like dangerous. Working with that is, is blasphemy or, or demonic or satanic. Also, the church really used those sort of words to scare people from this sort of stuff. But it's true. And the church would know this the best out of anyone. Sorry, my fire sign is starting to come in. <laughs> um, the church truly would know this better than anyone because magic can be used for good or bad. Intentions, your intention. I could set an intention that I want to have this house at any cost and I'm going to start sending negative energy to this family who lives there now so that they have to leave. They lose everything and they have to leave so I can have this house. Or I can say... Hmm, I really want this house. I'm excited to find a house, if it's this one or another one, whatever's for the highest good, so that I can experience a beautiful home like this one day. You can use magic in many ways, and magic by the people who govern our world has been used in dark power for the last several thousand years. So it is accurate that magic can be used for bad, and we've been led by those sort of, sorts of people who do that. So but the answer to that is not to be completely disconnected from our magic and from our power. When we don't understand how to use our intuition or we don't understand how to use that, our natural innate gifts, which everyone's are a little different, we aren't powerful at all. We can't, I would say we don't have real power. So we have to dump this religion of logic and say like, hmm, I think actually my soul knows best. And I will tap into the logic when I need it because our brain is helpful, right? Our brain is useful. When I'm calculating my cell phone bill that I split with my sister and my friend, it's helpful for me to understand math. It's helpful for me to understand what I can afford in terms of rent if I'm looking for a house or I'm looking for a car or I'm looking for, you know, I'm investing in something. It's helpful for me to understand math but I don't need my logical brain to make all of my life decisions for me. It's like, that's the passenger and my soul is driving. So for me at this point in my life, I literally completely run based on soul and I tap into my logical brain. A lot of people don't get it, but a lot of people also are not fulfilled in their living basic surfacey lives. And I'm not saying that out of judgment. I'm saying it because that's what we're trained to do in a patriarchal system, rat race life, same day over and over and over and over again. No fulfillment. You have the money you need to pay your bills. Maybe go on one vacation a year, right? <sighs> so, <laughs> I want to read this quote that I thought was so beautiful um, by, I believe her name is Barbara Moore. 
True religion is the original umbilical cord that binds our individual selves back to our larger universal source. True religion is the original umbilical cord that binds our individual selves back to our larger universal source. Just going to leave that there, right? We're connected with everything. The lizard that kept showing up here had a message. He's like, don't forget to talk about animal magic. Don't forget to talk about communicating with plants. Don't forget to talk about the wisdom of all parts of nature that we have access to. It's like in the movie, I keep using this reference, the movie Avatar. I'm calling it now a documentary because it's what happened to all the matriarchal cultures. Um, in the movie Avatar, which if you haven't watched it, please watch it. It's a really good movie. Um, you see how there's this innate connection between all the trees, between all the plants, between the humans and the plants, between the, or the beings there that live there and the animals, like when they kill an animal, they pray over it. They pray for its soul. They make eye contact with it. They're like sitting there as it passes away so that it provides nourishment for them. But it's a totally different experience, right? They're connected to all cycles of life, to all parts of life. And they're highly magical because of that. They have telekinesis. They have telepathic skills. They have sight. They have clairaudience, hearing. So many of us have these abilities, but they're being repressed. It's, I'm not going to, I was going to say something, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Anyways, I'd love to hear your take on this, but I want, what I really wanted to share here is the message of like, we're in a religious system of the logical brain where magic is not allowed, where our intuition is not seen as, as good as our logic. It's like, oh, that's cute but you're not going to really make decisions with that. Watch me. <laughs> so I hope that this helped you in some way. I hope that it inspired you maybe to take, to make an investment you feel excited about or to take a trip or to move to the place you've felt excited about or to leave something that you know isn't right for you in your soul, even if it looks right on paper. I hope that this inspires you and please let me know in the comments how it supports you, how it affected you, what changes you're going to make. Um, or if you have anything that you want to add to this, I'd love to hear in the comments. If you'd like more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel. I have lots more like this. If you enjoyed it and you want to leave a donation, I spend a lot of time creating these free videos for you guys. If you feel called to leave a donation, I would deeply appreciate that, but it's not expected. Um, and again, I have a free masterclass on my website that I'll put in the comments below that really goes into the shift from matriarchy to patriarchy. This is just like one tiny little segue from that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can watch it for free. Now it's available for free. Don't know if it'll be free forever. I just haven't decided. So if you wanna watch it, you can download it now for free. And yeah, that's it. I hope that this touched you. I hope that it helped you. And um, yeah, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching and thank you for spending your time with me.